Before I could really get into this, I needed to make a circle cutting jig for my trim router. I've made single use circle cutting jigs before, but I wanted this one to be a bit more reusable. I used a piece of scrap plexiglass to make it. For something like this, the most important thing is to make sure the whole pattern lines up for your router. I also made mine adjustable so I could cut a variety of different size circles. Incidentally, the reason this plexiglass is orange is because it's actually made for filtering light sparks around welding. And after about 15 minutes of work, I had a circle cutting jig. To make this ring lamp, I'm using some scrap Baltic birch plywood. This entire project is mostly just a test of ideas I had had to see if they would work. For the record though, making a circle cutting jig like this isn't my idea. It was just something I needed to do to be able to test other ideas. There was quite a bit of repetition involved as I cut increasingly wider and deeper rings. The little area that I'm not cutting here is to be left alone so it can eventually be part of the attachment fitting for the lamp. The goal here isn't to actually cut all the way through the plywood. I'm just getting it close so I can eventually clean it up with a flesh cutting bit. After cutting the rings, I hogged out the center channel. This is the area where the lights will be. Before I could clean up the inside of the ring, I needed to remove the waste disc in the center. I drilled some big holes so I could get the jigsaw blade in. With that disc removed, I used a flush cut bit on the router table to clean up the ring. I basically did the exact same thing on the outside, except this time I was able to use the bandsaw. Incidentally, this was my third attempt at making this ring. On my first attempt while cutting one of the rings, the router bit slipped out of the collet. This put a hole all the way through the ring in a spot where there wasn't supposed to be a hole, and a hole in my workbench top. Then on the second attempt, this happened. But the third attempt was successful, though it did require a little bit of cleanup. I made a small hole in the tab that comes off of the ring for the wire for the LED lights to come out of. And at this point, I realized I had no idea why I left this tab inside, so I decided to remove it. I hogged most of it out with the drill press and then cleaned the rest up with some chisels. I also took the time to fix a little spot of veneer that had chipped off. A little bit of donated veneer from one of my failed attempts and some Starbond medium CA glue was all it took. Before moving on, I sealed the inside of the ring with a little bit of water-based polyurethane. Then it was time to wire up the lights. I used leftover LED strip lights from another project, but I needed to add a long wire to be able to get power up to the ring. After tinning the ends of the wires, I installed an LED strip light connector. These are really easy to use, but you do need to make sure that you get the positive and negatives on the right side, or it won't work. I used some heat shrink tubing to act as a bit of a grommet for the wires. And before moving on, a quick ops check to make sure the wiring was good. I used a dab of hot glue to secure the connector to the side of the ring. The rest of the LED strip was held on with the adhesive backing. And before pouring the epoxy, I made sure the lights worked one last time. I sealed the wires with some hot glue so no epoxy would leak out. I used some old Pro Marine bar top epoxy that I had. It's been sitting on the shelf for a while, which is why it's a bit yellow. This type of epoxy is not intended for deep pours, so I did it in two goes. For the second thinner pour, I added some white pigment. I wanted to see if the opacity created by this pigment would diffuse the light enough that I could use this lamp for object photography. I think it would work, but I used way too much of the pigment. After the epoxy had cured, I sanded it and added an eighth inch round over. To be able to attach the ring to the neck of the lamp, I needed to make a small bracket. A lot of this design was sort of a make it up as I go along, and this bracket was no exception. After feeding the wires through, I glued the bracket onto the ring. I wanted to conceal the wire within the arm itself, and to do that I would need to have a very long hole going through the middle of the arm. So I cut some grooves down the edges of some thin strips of plywood and then glued those together. This created a nice long hole for the wire right down the middle of the arm. I decided to make a box joint type hinge for the arm itself. And then I cut the fingers out on the bandsaw. Screws will act as hinge pins, so those needed holes. And a bit of a round over so they'll actually work. 
And finally, a quick countersink and some sanding. For the base, I started by using one of my failed attempts. That big hole is where the switch will eventually go. The base is essentially just three pieces of plywood laminated together. But the center disc is a little bit different because this is the hinge point for our clamp. I wanted to be able to attach this to a table if I needed to. The clamp will screw onto a piece of threaded rod, but first I need to add a hinge pin hole. We'll see more about how this works later, but I'll give you a spoiler now. It doesn't work very well. After taking care of that part, I continued with my laminations. I did need to remember to add a hole so that the power line could actually enter the lamp. I didn't have a drill bit long enough, but I only really needed the hole to be at the outside of the circle. A little messy, but it works. I also needed a hole for the wire coming down from the neck of the lamp to be able to get to the switch. To attach the base of the neck of the lamp, which was mostly made off camera, I used dowels. To get the holes to line up on both sides, I used dowel centers. These are really handy to be able to transfer hole positions between two pieces. I accidentally drilled the holes on the upper piece just a bit too big for these dowels. I then added a round over on the top. After some sanding, I glued on the base of the neck. Because I had drilled those holes just a bit too big, I used some two-part epoxy. I needed some plastic pieces for the clamp and hinge screw nuts. I drafted these parts up in Shaper 3D on an iPad. I then 3D printed them. They're basically just plastic knobs that go around the metal nuts to make finger tightening easier. I used more CA glue to fix the nuts in place. I wanted to add a little bit of protection to the wood and I wanted it to be fast, so I used Rubio Monaco. This was another curiosity that I was testing out. See how Rubio Monaco would look on plywood. After the Rubio had dried, I was able to start assembling the lamp. This actually went pretty smoothly and I was able to feed the wires through the hinges easier than I had expected. This was honestly the first time that I had fully assembled the lamp to this point and I still wasn't sure that it wouldn't tip over. We'll call that a success. The LED strips are powered through a 12 volt transformer and the power supply enters the base through a plug type connector. I failed to catch it in frame but what just happened is I secured the connector into the base with some hot glue. After sliding a tube of heat shrink on, I spliced the two negative wires together. Ideally, you should use a heat gun for this, but a flame works too. I tinned some hooks onto the positive leads and then connected the toggle switch. With everything tucked neatly up into the switch recess, I installed a little access cover. The final step was installing the clamping mechanism. And it works. At least the light does. The clamping mechanism is about useless. This project was mainly an exercise in testing new ideas, and here's what did not work out. The base needed to be either wider or heavier because it is prone to tipping. I did expect this would happen. The plywood layers at the hinges started to separate. As a lamp, it's just not that bright. I think I used way too much of that pigment. And while the lit ring looks kind of cool up close, the illuminated lamp is pretty ugly on the whole. But when turned off or not in a dark room, I don't think it looks too bad. I think the design could definitely use some more refining though. Ultimately, making this lamp served its purpose. The lessons I learned on this will come in useful in future projects. Thanks for watching.